In this video, I'll demonstrate how to work with file hashing in the Windows environment. Now, why would we ever want to hash a file? What is the purpose? The purpose is to simply detect if a change has occurred since we last ran the computation that resulted in the hash. Now, in the Windows world, we can use third-party command line and GUI tools, or what I'm going to demonstrate here is using PowerShell with the built-in get-file-hash commandlet. But first, let's start by typing dir. Here we've got a working file called project1.txt, so let's just use Notepad to open that up to see what's inside it. It's got one line of text that says, this is one line. Okay, so that's what we've got to work with. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the git-filehash command. Let's so git-filehash. Now, unlike Linux, of course, PowerShell is not case sensitive. And I'll give it the name of the file I want to run a hash of. That would be project1.txt. And we can see the unique SHA-256 hash value that's been returned. Now, much like I can in other environments, like in Linux shells, I can redirect output of that command to a file for future reference, which is exactly what I want to do. I'm going to use the up arrow key to bring up that command, and at the end, I'm going to use the greater than symbol, because that will take the screen output and capture it and dump it into a file instead, which I'm going to call project one hash. So if I were to run notepad now against the project one hash file, then we would see, of course, it contains the SHA-256 algorithm listing along with the actual hash and the name and path of the file. Excellent. Notice that the hash starts with 227AB28. So now what we're going to do is close that up and instead we're going to use Notepad to open up the project one file, that's the origin data, and we're going to make a change. I'm going to add a line that says this is line two. And I'm going to go ahead and close and save that and we're going to recompute the hash again. So to do that, naturally, we're simply going to use git dash file hash, and it's going to run against project1.txt. Now we can tell immediately that we have a different returned hash value, because now our current returned hash begins with 082ac, where before it started with 227ab28. So we can now safely say that indeed, that file has changed since we last ran the hashing algorithm, because we have a different hash resultant value. Now, you can also use this when you download files from the internet because some web pages will publish a hash value. And to make sure that you downloaded the right file, that it hasn't been tampered with or corrupted, you can run a hashing tool like this one to make sure you get the same hash posted on the website. In this video, we learned how to run file hashes in Windows.